Hey everyone, I'm Polygon's Ben Kachera, and today I'm here with PC Perspective's Ryan Trout. How are you? I am doing excellent. Good to have you back. Because we're going to be talking about VR builds. Yes. And we are going to actually be building what amounts to an entry-level virtual reality gaming rig. Right, right And right. you've kind of put together what you think is a very good $900 build to hit kind of the minimum spec for the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. In terms of CPU, what is the pick here and, and why did you go with that chip? We picked the Core i5-6500. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at minimum specs on Oculus, I think they pick like a 4500, which is a, a Haswell generation architecture, if you're interested in that. This is the latest Intel generation. It's a Skylake part. Uh, it is a quad-core processor. It does not have hyper-threading, so it's quad-core addresses four threads. Uh, it's got a fairly high clock speed, 3.2 gigahertz up to 3.6 in turbo, but it's got a fairly modest power consumption level, 65 watts. So in terms of heat and noise, it'll be it'll be fairly minimal. But uh, for gaming, especially for VR gaming, where you're going to have more threads running at the same time, having a true quad core is really going to be a requirement for you. Not you could you could go to a Core i3 where it's dual core, hyper threaded, gives you four threads. Uh, but my guess is that um, the VR gaming uh, applications are going to be a little bit more CPU intensive as they as they have to handle all of the input uh, than we're used to seeing with normal games. For the price point, we're talking about two hundred and four dollars for the CPU. As you know, at the time we recorded it, that's you're not going to see a better improvement on that any time in the in the foreseeable future. Probably the next most important part is is going to be the GPU. Yeah, and it's by far the most expensive part in the build, mm -hmm. right? We went with uh, EVGA GTX 970 Super Clock. That just means it runs at slightly higher clock speeds out of the box. It's using a custom cooler. It's going to be a little bit quieter, uh, but it's got you know the HDMI connection you need, and then it's got DisplayPort and DVI for other monitors that you might want to connect to. Uh, it is three hundred and nine dollars. <laughs> right now. So again, like I said, the most expensive part. Um, four gigs of memory on it, 145 watt TDP. Virtual reality is so graphically intensive. Like yeah. this really is the, the floor, right? You can't, once you lose frame rate in virtual reality, whether you're using the Vive yeah. or the Rift, you get physically ill. It's not like it's okay to run this at a lower frame rate. It is not. It, you will not be comfortable in there. <laughs> like if you're going to skimp on any part because you only have $750 or $800 to pick, the GPU is not where to go with that. Can you talk about what RAM you selected? Is this like commodity RAM? Is this a brand you like? Uh, I think we picked uh, G-Skill, eight, gig, uh, eight gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. That's fairly low on the frequency side of things, mm -hmm. but again, trying to keep things at a budget. Uh, when you increase that clock speed, you tend to ramp up the price uh, at a much higher rate. It's, it's a non-linear change in, uh, in cost. And one of the other things we were talking about a little bit is that you have two forms of storage here. Yeah. You do have an SSD, and you also have um, a two terabyte it's like a standard hard drive sure. in there as well. If you build a PC that doesn't have an SSD in it at this point in time, you're, you're shortchanging yourself immediately, right? The, the performance benefits of an SSD in boot up time, application start time, game load time, level load time are immediate and they're dramatic. Uh, but the problem is, is the cost per gigabyte that you pay is way higher on an SSD than on a standard traditional spinning disk hard drive. Um, so I went with the 250 gig Samsung Evo 8, or Samsung uh, 850 Evo, right, which is a, a, a it's a fairly high performance SSD, uh, but it's also fairly budget friendly. You can get some cheaper ones and you can also get some slower ones. And that's an $88 part. I'm curious if there's anything special about your power supply and cooling solutions. Uh, the power supply is an EVGA 500 watt. It's kind of just a, a really good off the shelf part. It's gonna have high reliability, uh, fairly good efficiency, uh, the right amount of power you need to power the CPU and the GPU and everything and have a little bit of, of room left over. Uh, the CPU cooler is oddly the most popular aftermarket cooler that's been around for like three years. Like it's it's and it's super cheap, twenty nine bucks, right? Sure. Way better than uh, any you know stock Intel cooler you would have ever gotten as well. For the case, it's it's a fifty two dollar case. Mm -hmm. It has a huge side window. Yeah. What else about this case jumped out that made you say, hey, this is the case for our budget virtual reality? It's got an LED fan in the front. What? <laughs> I know. If you look at Newegg or Amazon and you search computer cases, there's going to be a thousand options. Uh, and so it's pretty much down to what do you like. This particular case I like, it's it's big enough for you to build in, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it, we, we were talking earlier about mini ITX cases being very hard to work in. This won't have that problem. It's uh, got plenty of capability for airflow if you want to add fans to it. Uh, it has some things inside that help with 
making the cable clutter minimized, right? So it's got cable grommets so you can route things behind the motherboard to plug in. Uh, and it's got, you know, the front panel connections we need, uh, you know, USB and all that stuff mm -hmm. as well. But again, if you don't like the styling of, uh, what do we pick here? The Corsair Spec 01, mm -hmm. the red one, because it has the red LED nice. on the front of it. Uh, th there are lots of other options similar uh, at a similar price point to that. When it comes to motherboard, is this just kind of the sub $100 motherboard that's really strong and easy to use and has everything we need? I mean, pretty much that's what you're looking at. The, yeah. the, the Gigabyte H170 Gaming 3 is one of dozens of boards that could kind of fit in this category. It has, you know, six SATA ports. It's got uh, two M.2 ports, which are for much higher speed storage if you decide you want to upgrade that down the road. Uh, it's got gigabit networking. It's got, you know, kind of upgraded audio quality as well, uh, which will help for, for gamers. But otherwise, we're looking at a $94 motherboard that supports our processor, supports our video card, uh, and has all the capabilities you need. It's got all the USB 3.0 ports uh, that you'll need for connecting the, the Rift or the Vive and all that type of stuff. You know, this is this is a budget quality, a budget level board um, that has the features required to get a gaming PC off the ground. So this is it. This is this is the finished. Th this is the the $900 system. We ran the Oculus tool. And that gave us all green checks. All green check marks, straight down the line. And then we ran the uh, the the Valve Steam VR tool that actually it, it's not just a check. This right. will run you through um, a basic system, and it'll stress test your system. And we got a score of seven point one, which is listed as high by them. Mm -hmm. uh, it puts it squarely in the middle of the green area of that spectrum, where it's, you are ready for VR. And so it, we were able to play it on the system itself sure. right? and confirm whether or not the results from the Oculus tool and the results from the Steam VR tool were, were, were true. I was surprised at what we found when we ran this with a bunch of games yeah. on, on uh, the Oculus Rift. And maybe I shouldn't be because this is aimed at kind of the minimum spec that Oculus said, this is what you need to have a good VR experience. Right. And shock of shocks, we had a really good VR experience. We really did. And then we went back in, and there's nothing in any of this software keeping you from maxing things out if the developer decides to give you um, the options to do yep. so. So we maximized everything. And that doesn't mean that everything is perfect. When we maximized the settings in Eve Valkyrie, we did hit a frame rate wall. You definitely saw some kind of animation judder mm -hmm. in the headset that you weren't seeing on on the the kind of the 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 output on the screen right so it's clear that there there're different uh, uh, views of what's happening in the in the render engine so we were seeing what i would characterize as frame rate drops to 60 to 75 frames if not lower right in a game as graphically intensive as Valkyrie, if we were playing on a screen or a computer monitor and it was outputting at 75 frames a second, 16 by 9, great outcome yeah, on a $900 would, would system. Fantastic. On a virtual reality headset that's designed to run at a rock solid 90 frames a second and that's the comfortable rate, yeah. you feel it. Yeah. You, we felt it immediately. We physically removed the headset and we were like, if we're going to be testing more things today, <laughs> that's as sick as we're comfortable getting it's, with these frame rate drops. And 90 is, is a frame rate that not very many people in the PC market before have ever even tried to target, right? Mm -hmm. They've always targeted, as long as you can get to 60, you'll be great. Uh, but now we're saying the floor is 90 and uh, it becomes obvious when you're playing a game that we, again, artificially jacked up the settings on just to prove the case that this, this, was, this was a thing that occurred, that like, yeah, it, it does adversely affect your experience pretty dramatically mm -hmm. uh, when you have those low frame dips and kind of frame skips. Overall, what I want to stress is with the launch games of the Oculus Rift, everything we've played on this system that costs around $900, it wasn't a minimum level virtual reality experience. It was a very, very good, yeah. enjoyable, fun virtual reality experience. This is gonna be a really good entry level, solid gaming PC that's gonna be able to get you where you need to go in virtual yep. reality.